Here at ASCO 2013, we're sitting with one of the men everyone wants to seem to talk to at this conference. He is Nicholas J. Vogelzang, MD, medical oncologist with the Comprehensive Cancer Centers of Nevada, and also he is the investigator on Zofigo, the newly approved FDA drug for treatment of prostate cancer. Thanks for joining us, sir. You're welcome. Nice to be here this morning. Kind of noisy in here, but just a little. I guess it's a good morning for uh, science. You've created a buzz. <laughs> Thanks. So. How is this for you? This is an exciting time. You've got yeah. some some good data to present. Yeah, this is, this is an exciting drug. Uh, it, it, you know, I, I had my eye on it uh, when we first heard about it in 2004, 2005. It was a novel new radio pharmaceutical given intravenously every month. You could give it repetitively, uh, which is in contrast to the other drugs. You get bone, bone marrow suppression, and this drug was obviously of interest. So when I had the opportunity to join the trial, uh, I said, sign me up. And uh, it took our state of Nevada 18 months to approve the licensing for this drug. So it, it launched in Europe. Um, but once I finally got it through the nuclear regulatory uh, regulations, uh, we were able to accrue very rapidly. It, it was a wonderful study because it did not discriminate very much in who could get it. So you had men, uh, for example, I had a, uh, I had a World War II uh, fighter pilot who flew Mustangs, uh, and he absolutely refused to take chemotherapy. So I gave him the drug, and he said, oh, this is a, ter a terrible drug. I feel bad, I, ah, rah, rah. you know, one of these grumpy old men. Turned out he was getting placebo. Well, you know, that's the problem. You know, when you get placebo, you get all these side effects of the cancer. But when you get, when you take the drug, all those side effects go down. So what we saw was we saw that the placebo patients had more side effects than the treated patients. Um, so that's an advantage that you, you can't see very often uh, in, in these studies. Most of these studies in prostate cancer are very restrictive. You know, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to have your, you know, you got to have your teeth brushed a certain way, you got to get up in the morning, you got to be at the certain, you know, it's, it's like it's very hard to get people on study. This study was really for an every man's study. It was a great study for that perspective. What would you want your colleagues to know from your personal experience? People can see the data and we'll provide the yeah. data with this interview, yeah. but you know this well, this drug as yeah. well as anyone. Right. It, I mean, my story of the Mustang fighter pilot from World War II is instructive. These guys have a lot of global complaints. They don't feel well. They're a little nauseated. They're losing weight. They have achy pain. And, uh, you know, you don't always want to give them chemotherapy, honestly. They're, you know, this, this particular guy was 89 years old. You know, did I really want to give him chemotherapy? Not really. Um, so it's safe to give. You can give it easily with minimal bone marrow suppression. In fact, the poster that I'm having today shows that with, in patients who've had no prior chemotherapy, bone marrow suppression is negligible, just minimal. So now if you've had prior chemotherapy, your bone marrow suppression risks are a little higher. But interestingly, the number of transfusions in the uh, placebo or in the radium-treated patients was identical, something like 22% overall. So the cancer itself causes more symptoms than this drug causes. That's my take-home message. I saw a newspaper uh, interview you did where you simplified it and just called it liquid radiation. Right, right. It is. You know, people get worried about chemo. They say, oh, I'll lose my hair, I get diarrhea, you know, I get sores in my mouth. But in this case, um, there's none of that. So it's, it's sort of like chemotherapy light, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it doesn't really cause enough side effects to be worried about it, but it gets these guys to the point that they believe that there is a treatment for their cancer. Many of these guys in their late 80s, early 90s are very, they're very reluctant to take any treatment. You know, they, they sort of tell you, 
you know, look, I've had a good life. Uh, I know I'm going to die from this cancer. I want to be comfortable. I don't want to be put into more misery than I'm already in. And I can pretty much assure them that this drug will alleviate their pain, improve their quality of life, reduce their need for narcotics, reduce their need for external radiation, and may allow them to feel good enough to say, well, you know, maybe I will take chemotherapy. So it, it's, a, it's a pretty nice drug. That's great news for the patients, but you say there's also some good news for clinicians in that, in your experience, you can tell pretty quickly whether yeah. this is working for the patient or not. Can you explain that? Yeah, that's a good point. The, um, the, the patients respond rather rapidly. Um, they don't all respond rapidly, but usually within the first month or sometimes the first week, patients are noticing their pain. The hardest part about it is I, I have patients come in and they say, I say, how are you doing? Oh, really good. I go, and I look back at my notes and I go, well, what about that pain in your right hip? Oh, that went away. Well, what about your pain in your shoulder? Oh, well, that went away. Well, what, what, what about that, that nausea? Oh, that went away. You know, but they don't come in and they say, oh, hallelujah, I'm better. They just go, oh, it's okay, because they feel normal. That's the remarkable thing. They don't, they don't have anything other than, I feel pretty normal. Now, not everybody gets that kind of relief. The one thing you have to worry about is that the tumors not in the bone are not radiated. So if you have a tumor on a bone and it's outside the bone, like uh, expansal, that will not, uh, the pain will not be relieved. I've got a guy from Colorado like that. Um, he's got good bone pain relief, but where the cancer is outside of the bone, it doesn't touch it. And, and you gotta worry about it being in the liver and lung and lymph nodes and adrenals. But the study allowed people uh, to be treated even if they had lymph node enlargement. What do you see as the future implications with Sovigo for patients? Well, I think, you know, Michael Morris, uh, one of my colleagues from Sloan Kettering, has been trying to combine it with chemotherapy. It's a little tough. It doesn't combine well. In fact, the FDA said, don't give it with chemotherapy. That was their, their package label, uh, or package insert. What I know uh, Bayer and uh, Algeta are likely to do is combine it with uh, abiraterone or Zytiga. It should combine well with with vaccines, with Provenge, with uh, Extandi or Enzalutamide, it's probably safe to give it with most hormones. Remember that we were allowed to give it with uh, ketoconazole, uh, with DES, all of the standard secondary hormone therapies were allowed in either group. They were allowed in the placebo or in the radium group. So uh, we have pretty good safety profile when combined with other drugs. Very good. Thank you. Congratulations on your, on your success, and uh, best of lady luck to you when you go home to yeah, Las Vegas. Yeah, I, I hope I'll roll a few for you. Thank you, sir. All right, thanks. Okay. Bye-bye.